everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. And before we get started on today's creative kiwi daffodil design, I wanted to show you guys what I've been up to. So I think last weekend uh, Misha wanted skulls in this, you know, old fashioned kind of um, filet crochet freestanding lace. There's nothing to this guy. It's beautiful. So I went all out and did two colors and I love it. So this could be a bookmark or you could sew a couple of them together with just a little zigzag stitch in black. Yay. So we've seen the flamingo. I just really love the flamingo so I put them out again. And this is my newest one. Now, this is just regular um, uh, FSL. Uh, isn't it pretty? What do you think, Don? Don's like really impressed. I like the danglies. Yeah, with the dangly bits here. Uh, really cute. Now, what can you do with this? A lot, actually. You could sew this onto something. Uh, you could put it, for example, because I'm using the same pink. All right, if that was a little higher, look how good that looks. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Good idea. Or at the bottom. I guess it would go better at the bottom, and you could just sew it on. It's the same color pink, I think, or pretty close, anyways. So isn't that cute? So you could take your freestanding lace bookmarks and make them even prettier. So I'm going to be doing delicate things like this. So let me know what you guys think of that. I think it's a whole lot of fun. I love the lace. Yeah, I'm having fun. It's been a bit of a learning thing how to do this old fashioned. Um, Misha, oh, looks like a hair ornament. Well, you know, that's easy to do. Just glue yeah. this part onto a clip. Brilliant. Yes, that's another thing you can use it for. Um, it's the perfect size too. I love it. So now the one that I've been working on the most is, ready, drum roll, dun dun dun, dun my lace gnome bowl. What do you think? It's awesome. So I what made, yeah, I made an orange bearded gnome a white bearded gnome and a brown bearded gnome. And uh, it's very flexible, so it's nice. And I did use dark colored thread when sewing, that's what you can see, um, because um, I did um, not a video, but pictures of how to sew it together, so I wanted to show it. So isn't that cute? I might tweak the top a little bit, um, but, uh, uh, and you can also make each part stiffer. You can use, um, you can leave a little bit of the water soluble stabilizer in it, or you can use a little bit of starch and iron it. So I'm hoping to get this to the testers and then I can release it. Isn't that cool though? I love it. The size is perfect and this is what I've been doing with it. Isn't that awesome? Not for lace, you need to put a candle in it. Yeah, you could put a candle in it. It could, so many uses. You could line it too. Um, awesome. But I love, I love this. So I might tweak it a bit. I, I don't exactly like how these went together. I do like the second color on it, mind you. But uh, I'm going to tweak that and then get that out to everyone. So hopefully you guys can get started making some of my lace. Um, these ones, when you watch them stitch out, let me put it on white background so you can see. When you watch these ones stitch out, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, and I've done another one and I've incorporated some different stitches in it too. So that's an experiment. So lots of lace coming up. Now that I've got the whole thing down pat, I'll be able to go crazy with it. So much fun. So today we're going to do a daffodil um, coaster from Creative Kiwi. And I picked kind of normal colors, kind of. I don't know if they're normal, but... Um, I was looking for an orange and yellow batik for the flower, but I couldn't find any. So I just went, eh, we'll just do the 
you know, regular colors. So um, solid colors and then a pretty one for the background. And I think this is really cute. So I also looked for um, the dime medley thread, uh, thinking that maybe uh, I'd have a yellow and green one, but I didn't find any of that too. So I'm settling for normal, kind of normal. Yo, know, it's normal. We know it's normal. Nothing's normal. Nothing's normal. Nothing's normal. So this comes together pretty easily. This is all you need. I folded the fabric. This is for the envelope um, fold. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're ready to go. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. So, Don, yeah. let's go to... Captain Jack, the machine, the embroidery machine, which is my Luminaire 2. 2. Luminaire 2. two. I am doing the 5x5 five five size, so it fits into my 5x7 hoop, and I have no show mesh, and a pink thread for no apparent reason, and the 7511 needle, I never changed the needle, so there we go. Okay, so our first step is going to be placement. So there's a whole bunch of, uh-oh, I didn't check bobbin. Uh -oh. I, didn't hear bobbin. I don't know how it's going to work out. I can't quite see underneath it. Yeah, uh-oh. Now make sure when you guys are stitching these out um, when you're finished that you leave enough of a seam allowance uh, so you don't pop out the seams. Quarter of an inch, half an inch, and then you can clip the corners. Uh, warm and natural batting, nothing special. Kind of awesome though, but nothing special. And I'm going to trim this a little bit, you know, because I've got a, a layer cake to put on the next piece. So, this is awesome. I haven't done Creative Kiwi for a long time. I just thought this would be a lot of fun. I see everyone's excited for FSL. I am having so much fun doing the old-fashioned filet crochet FSL. Um, I love it. Okay, so put our background on. Now I'm going to be careful to orient everything nicely. Isn't that pretty fabric? I love it. I, I thought the green would look good, and this is why I need to trim it down a little bit. We'll do that after. So we want it like this? Yes, we do. So we're just going to stitch this down and see how good the pink looks because this flower here is pink. No, not quite. I needed a lighter pink. Oh well. I'll pull one out for what I want. Yeah, I have it right here in my exquisite thread. Oh yeah, that's cute background. Love it. Now it's going to give us the outline for the second part the inner part which i'm going to use a nice green and then i'm going to trim everything down a little bit just to make it a little more manageable that's all and a quick trim yeah definitely a lighter pink although it kind of looks like the darker pink in there so it might be okay uh, i like it pretty so you don't have to trim the outside yet. I'm just going to do it because it's a little unruly. If you do the 8x8 eight eight size too, it's, it's awesome. This is what I would consider like normal size. So that, the center part here, is our placement. So i am going to not play fabric chicken today guys Ooh, I love that green. isn't that green it's isn't that green bright green, green? Uh, I like green. yeah judy quilt sent me uh solid colors because she noticed i didn't have any 
Now you do. Now I do. Trying to use them. These are just little bits of leftovers, and it's perfect for this because you really don't need a whole lot on it. So if your fabric, your top fabric, the green, is light and your bottom one is dark, you can cut out the center so it doesn't show through. That's also what those lines are for. Okay, little dance, pink and green, awesome. Let's go back to the desk. So yeah, if I have backing on it and plus this is dark, but if you put the green piece or whatever piece you're using over the top and it shows through, you can cut out this fabric in the center and then it won't show through anymore. So I'm gonna grab my scissors you don't you really don't have to do this yet i am just going to tidy things up a little bit um and maybe check my bobbin while i'm at it <laughs> just so i don't have the rest of the layer cake dancing around being annoying so make sure i know where my seam is i don't want to shortcut anything and that should do so that's just tidying it up now we do have to cut this one out in normal um applique fashion yeah that green is gorgeous isn't it it is now my greens don't match a hundred percent but i think they still look great it's darker but it's still a green and i kept it to solid because i want the focal point of this to be the uh, bright yellow daffodil. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about it. Maybe. No, I actually didn't check it at all this morning. It's kind of been a stressful morning. <laughs> stressful morning. So that's what it should look like at this point. Now, this is the yellow I'm using, and this is the yellow I'm using. So. Nice. It should look fantastic on this green. And then just flowers in the background. If I had daffodil fabric, I think that would look great. Yes, Judy Quilt says, I like the contrast of the greens. Yeah, it's quite stunning, isn't it? So you don't have to match everything up, I guess is what my whole point is on this. You don't have to match it up. So, okay, a little tidier. Let's go back to the machine. Oh, I pretty much have a full bobbin, so awesome. I um, I got to change the thread now. I'm going to take off this bright pink. And I am going to do something not, not kooky, but just a little bit different. I am going to do the quilting stitches, which are up next. I am going to do them in yellow, yellow, yellow. Uh, that's why I was trying to find some variegated thread because uh, I think the quilting stitches would look fantastic in variegated thread, but I couldn't find what I was looking for. So I thought, eh, we'll just go for plain. Let's do that yellow. So it looks like the daffodil is glowing. These are glow marks to me for sure. Uh, so, just downloaded the Daffodil Coaster. Uh, love the contrast. Yeah, thank you. And see, this looks awesome on it. It's not, you know, black and white 100%, but it keeps the yellow kind of going. I like it. Just simple echo stitches. Awesome. Yeah, beautiful. I like. I think we're going to do the daffodil next. No, we're doing the outside next. So I am going to do this color on the outside. Pink. I'm pulling from the background. I just wanted like a different color. So I'm pulling the, the pale pink from the background. And I thought... That would look fantastic. So I'm taking my yellow out. I'm not 
putting it too far away though because it is going to be used for um, the daffodil. So, which is cool. So let's see how this pink would look. So pink, pale pink, the greens, the bright yellows, it, it should be good. I thought this was predominant enough to be able to work. So let's see. We're also going to get the outline for the daffodil. So I think that's awesome. But pink. Yep, it's going to look good. I like it. That's awesome. And I love zigzag stitches on the outside of applique. Also awesome. I think this is going to be very pretty. Nice spring bright colors. We used to have daffodils in our backyard. I bet you the hounds have trampled them all. Yeah. Tiger lilies are awesome as well. But daffodils, beautiful. So, nice zigzag stitch and that just holds everything down. And then our wonderful, forgiving satin stitches. Yes, oh, I matched the pink almost perfectly. Oh, I love it. I love it. I know, most people probably thought I was going to do a green around it. Because we're greens and yellows. Not today. See how well that matches? I love it. So now because I'm putting the pink on when you look at it your eye is drawn to the pink and it makes the pink in the flowers stand out a little bit which I think is pretty darn cool spring it's snowing here yeah it's snowing here too but girl can dream right for sure snowing I know Still keep thinking, Spring. Yeah, doesn't that pink look good? I did actually have a green, the same color as the background, to use, but I thought, nah, nah, we don't need any more green. So, uh, awesome, awesome. So, any questions? Uh, let's see. I love this yellow daffodil says carol yeah i thought it'd be pretty we haven't done creative kiwi for a while so i thought that would be kind of fun um i absolutely love echo stitches St still learning how to do this with my brother stellaire in the my design center yeah awesome it actually uh the luminaire the stellaire the dream machine all those uh they have quilting designs um, and backgrounds that are awesome so basically you can bring in any design set up the hoop size and add the quilting stitches and it even does the echo stitches and I think that's a whole lot of fun sending a bit of our sun and spring weather to everyone well thank you we kind of need it although I don't mind the cold um, I think it has to do with having a heart attack and the meds I take, but I really dislike being hot since then. I used to be like always cold trying to get warm, but not now. I don't like it, so I'd rather be cold, which is weird, but there we go. Kathy says, my daffodils are just starting to come up. I planted about a hundred bulbs last year. They came from my parents' place before it was sold. Wonderful. Wonderful. You should post a picture of your daffodils when they come up in the group because love I'd love to see it. I, uh, I know. Uh, Brenda says, Sue, I can't wait for the Anita Good Design flip through. The color cover has me excited. Awesome. I don't even look at it until the first because I love the surprise and the excitement of the whole thing. So 
Uh, I hope it's good. I really enjoyed stitching out the stained glass designs. They were awesome. And I always look forward to the Anita Good Design flip through. So, yeah, I love the pink. I'm really, really happy with the pink. I love how it turned out. It just makes it complete, I think. My daffodils have been blooming the last two weeks, says Betty Turner. Oh, lucky you. Awesome. Okay, so that didn't take long at all. So what I'm going to do is change back to my yellow. So I'm going to change the threads, take off that beautiful pink. I am glad that I changed to the lighter pink for sure. And I am going to put my bright gold. So this gold is uh, exquisite thread and it's 4117 is the number in case anyone wants to know. Uh, it's nice and bright, kind of not a lemony but more of a like a ath athletic gold color and I just really like it. So as it was stitching out the satin stitches, it gave us our outline for the daffodil. So it's all the way around here. So the next step is going to be stitching the fabric down. And if you make a mistake on that, if you just see like the shape of it and go, oh no, uh, you could just back it up and fix it. It's pretty easy to do. But just try to remember the, the placement line just gets stitched out. Um, and it works. There we go. Stitched out twice. Love it. And I can actually see the lines. I was a little bit worried for a minute there that I wouldn't be able to see the cut lines, but I can. So, yay. Makes it easier. Okay, so. What kind of stitches on top of the sand? Um, I don't know. Probably a motif stitch back to the desk on. Probably, I didn't create it, it's Creative Kiwi, so I have a programmable satin stitch that I usually use, which is nice. Kind of like cuts um, into the satin and makes a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, my first In the Hoop project was the Pumpkin Coaster by KK. Thank you, Sue. That's awesome. Yeah, I think everybody I know has a creative Kiwi coaster because I did so many videos on them. It was awesome. And thank you very much, Is Isabel. Uh, much appreciated. Every um, donation goes, we roll it right back into the channel so I can get more uh, fantastic fabric to show you guys different combinations crazy things, kind of, you know, pink and green things for sure. Not necessarily all Halloween fabric. So, uh, I got some Missouri stars, been having some great sales. So I picked up a whole bunch of layer cakes that are really cute. Um, the fall ones, which is nice sunflowers and fall colors not that you know anyone needs to talk about fall at all but no, not yet. so carefully cut this out and I did a, actually a pretty good job of trimming so you can see the colors isn't that fantastic so I'm going to use my gold for the daffodils so let's go back to the machine and we're going to let this stitch it and it's going to do satin stitches. It's going to fill the center piece a little bit. Oh, I see. I need a black. I will get myself black. I'll unbury it. There we go. The pink I used is uh, 305. 
305 and it's exquisite thread again. So nice zigzag stitches. We gotta love those. So let's see what's happening in the chat. Oh, traveling. Oh, yes. Traveling. No, I'm not doing any of that yet. I'm thinking about turning some jeans into pedal pushers. Well, I haven't heard that name for a long time. <laughs> this would be perfect in 4x4 size along the bottom as an accent cuff. You know what else would be perfect? My little freestanding lace with danglers at the bottom of jeans. I think that would be awesome. And it would be easy to do because you could just do a few of them and then sew them on so you don't have to take the jeans apart and flatten them. So just saying, just saying. Ooh, I love this coaster. Um, I'm glad I did the pink. I love the pink. I think that's awesome. Judy Quilt says, I was golfing here in Florida and there was a scream of joy coming from another group of friends on a different hole. Came to find out these are Canadian friends and heard about the April no test. Okay, I don't know what they'd be so happy about that they don't have to get tested. Oh, oh well. Um, I'm going to a craft sale. We haven't had many for the past couple of years. I'm excited. Yeah, I guess things um, are opening up a little bit more. A little bit, little bit better. I don't know. I'm still going to stay home. So, <laughs> I was watching a TV show about sewing the other night and heard Stitch in the Ditch. Yes. Stitch in the Ditch and there's a Stitch in the Ditch foot that you can use as well so I need um, to do some I need to finish my Halloween quilt project and then I need to work on what do I oh more lace because you know lace for sure me too Sue yeah just, I think I'm going to stay in. I think we just need to show proof of vaccination. Oh, they're still talking about traveling. Well, I'm not planning on doing any of that. I don't know where I'd go anyways. I need a good design doesn't have their garage sale anymore, so... Boo. Yeah, I know. Kind of boo. That, at least we got to do it once. It happened to be the last time, but... Um, Sue, they're happy because they charge a fortune for those tests in the state. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I had no way of knowing that. That makes sense. Um, we have two sitting upstairs, don't we, Don? Yes. Yeah, they're different tests that they were using. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, that makes more sense, Judy. Thank you. I was wondering why they would be so happy, but... I guess so the snowbirds can come home. Stitching out gorgeous. Doing that outside satin stitches now. So one more thread change. Oh look, you can see the googly eyes just perfectly. I love googly eyes. They're so googly. I just finished some FSL Easter Bunny baskets from Embroidery Library. Awesome. I still have to make... Uh, FSL Easter eggs, the crochet, fillet crochet Easter eggs. We'll have to think of a whole bunch more uses for them. Although I'm very happy doing bookmarks because they can take a long uh, time to stitch. It's fascinating to watch. Hopefully the team testers get at it and tell me what they think. It's just really cool to watch. Very stitch intense but not dense. Uh, and you pretty much have to see it to believe it, I think. For sure. Judy Quilt says, I'm flying to Rochester, New York this Wednesday to attend the memorial service for my brother-in-law who died of cancer. Snow or ice, please. Uh, no snow or ice. 
Sorry, I read that wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. No snow or ice. New York gets kind of icy. And sorry for your loss as well. And I'm glad you're able to go. That's nice. Uh, I'm going to try Lace Butterfly from KK. You have once again intrigued me. Uh, hashtag sorry not sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Freestanding Lace has always been one of my favorites. Um, especially the filet crochet ones because it reminds me of my grandma and my great aunt sitting there stitching itty bitty tiny crochet stitches so it's just something I've wanted to do so I'm glad it's taken me a couple of weeks of you know hunker down and study and figure it out um, what I need to do to make it done and there's a lot of counting squares in it so yeah it's kind of cool Kinda cool indeed. So I think this is just about done. What a beautiful, easy stitch out. Gotta love it. Almost done. Very pretty, I love the colors. I love the pink. Pink and green. The, the pink just pulls the flowers from the background and you can see enough of them. It's just sparse enough, and that yellow is yellow. FSL makes great jewelry, too. It does. I was kind of thinking um, we're dash hound people over here, so I'm thinking what I want to make that has dash hounds in it, and it's just about anything, but I thought of earrings. I would love to have a pair of lace dash hound earrings. Maybe the front on one side and the back end on the other, so it looks like a long dog. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I would like to try this coaster using a yellow where you put the green and then just stitching the daffodil. Um, I think that would look good. I don't... You'd have to make sure that you used on the daffodil stitching something that stands out just enough. Otherwise, it will all blend in too much and you won't be able to, your eye won't be able to pick out the daffodil. So that would be my only suggestion. So you could do something lighter or darker. I think it would look good. I like the contrast. I'm really happy with the, the contrast between the yellow and the green. Um, a lot of people would use, you know, like a lighter color behind it, but I wanted the daffodil to stand out. I actually thought of using navy blue or black, but uh, just to make the daffodil stand out anymore, but I didn't. I didn't think that would be springy enough. Black is not a springtime color for sure. Use the dye metallic thread Sue FSL earrings. And you can use the dime metallic thread in the bobbin as well. That's one of the things that I did to test out. And I did it on a whole bunch of FSL designs. I did uh, snowflakes, which ended up on my Christmas tree. And I did gold and I did silver. And I put the Kingstar metallic in the top obviously and then in the bobbin and it worked perfectly i'm really happy with that and that's when uh you know i finished all my testing and i told everyone how awesome it is and every time i use king star metallic i am just thrilled that it works that's all it is because i do have other um metallic red but mm, it's not nice to use I think you, you can get it to work but it's a bit of a hassle so I much prefer Kingstar Metallic and now that they have orange I am particularly happy they have fall colors so a couple different shades of gold and orange and I'm really happy with that because Everybody needs some metallic Halloween pumpkins. Just saying. Everybody. 
and the purple is that they have is stunning so yeah i wish i could find huge big cones of it i know cindy king has found some um i think that would be awesome to have big cones of it i would use it too man i would use it all so this is the center of the flower and it's little candle wicking stitches that's clever i didn't realize it was hmm. i love candle wicking so that camera just froze did it yeah huh i went to it and it just froze i'm like no really okay well i'll put the other one on it if you can show it to me that's not quite what we want, so I'll get it a little bit closer. These are the most expensive cameras we've ever bought, and darn it. Can you work with that? I can work with that, yeah. Okay. Sorry, frozen. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Okay. So, different view. Now I get to move this one out of the way, and I can see. So, for this a uh, type of coaster it is an envelope backing so what you do she gives you the measurements for each and it's a piece of fabric and it's folded in half and it's really helpful if you iron it to have a nice sharp point yes i did by the way and then we're gonna fold it fold put it so it folds over so the turning is easy so the things that you have to make sure are that it goes over the line and leaves you a seam allowance and you want the fold towards the center and I always double check the fold and then you just do it again and you do want them overlapped which is awesome so I'm gonna double check my edges oh I got lots of room there it's perfect and this just makes it really easy to do and also having the extra fabric makes it more absorbent which is awesome so i'm just going to leave my black thread in because it's not going to show when we're done and it's just going to stitch it all down now if you don't like to do these envelope finishes you could uh advance your machine a little bit and stitch it around and stop just short and that would that would not hold down uh that would leave you an opening and then you can just turn it like we normally do so i have a little bit of a, a space there but that's fine uh probably not the greatest idea to uh put your folds right where it starts but you know what are you gonna do right we get a nice view happy music already so let's go back to the desk dawn and we are going to very quickly finish this design i love the envelope finish yeah it sure makes it easy doesn't it oh okay i don't know why that was so hard to do so now we have our mug rug and it even looks beautiful from the back but that's okay i'm going to take my big sharp scissors and this is the easy part. And I am just gonna trim through everything. That's why I said don't bother trimming um, because you might forget to leave the seam allowance and we don't wanna do that. We don't want our seams popping out and opening up. Uh, easy to fix, but if you can avoid it, that's even better. So that's about right, that's fine. And I'm going to um, clip the corners, I guess, just a little bit better. I think I sh probably should have clipped into them, but good enough. So we have little pieces of everything all over the place. So I just have to be careful when I turn it. So now, because we did this wonderful envelope backing, um, then we're just going to turn it and carefully so one side and then the other just makes for a really nice finish and you don't have to you know do anything else to it which is kind of nice like you don't have to close any seams 
So it's nice for a change. Nice for a change. And you don't have to use water soluble stabilizers. So I'm just gently, now remember I cut these kind of short, so I want to be really careful. I'm just gently pushing out the corners so they have that nice round effect. And look how perfect that is. Just like that, that's perfect. I love the size. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Enough of the pink shows. I should have maybe placed it a little bit better. But isn't that cute? And the envelope finish is just perfect. There's no pulling. There's no anything on it. So thank you, Creative Kiwi. I uh, really like this one. I like the colors. Nice spring colors. So it's absolutely perfect so have fun with colors you don't necessarily have to do yellow daffodils although that is the traditional thing um like i said you could do an orange and yellow batik i just couldn't find it um and play around with your colors don't be afraid to throw in an odd color you know that maybe matches your background fabric and maybe not so have fun with these. They're awesome. You can look forward to the upcoming lace, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, lots more coming. I'm really into it, and it's gorgeous. So, poo. And, of course, our, let's find the ginger one, our, our gnome. You got to love our gnome. So much fun. Gnome bowl. Gnome bowl. Don likes it. Gnome bowl. Gnome bowl. So... Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Oh yeah, please like this video. Share with all of your embroidery friends so they can see pretty colors and exactly how to do this design. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye.